service on the outbound Glen Highway because of an accident just before Fort Richardson overpass. Traffic is already starting to stack up to Muldoon. Be prepared for some lengthy delays of about 30 minutes as APD gets those vehicles moved out of the roadway. out of downtown via the Knick Crossing to Point McKenzie. Traffic is moving along at good speeds with no delays. Be careful on your commute. I'm Holly Knight with your South Central Traffic Update. We had a great grand opening. We had three governors there, three of the past governors. It's great to see people using it. We've got more traffic on it than we thought we'd have in the first year. We actually did get it open uh, a couple months earlier because there was such a demand. Almost 40% uh, of the people that live in the Mansonboro and they commute to Anchorage. All these years they've had to drive around on the Glen Highway and today they can take the shorter route. Every great city in the history of the world has been tied into a body of water. You know, I don't care if it's Cairo or London, and these great ports, even Puget Sound. And with that goes things, it goes ferries, there goes docks and bridges. This is Amanda. Well, it's important that when we develop projects like this that, that we recognize that there's concerns. Some of them are legitimate concerns and and that's okay, you know what I mean? You know, that's part of developing a project and that's part of our job. I, I think Kabata's done a very good job, uh, you know, with, with the tools that they have. Again, there's opposition to it because there's a fear of the unknown. I haven't seen a transportation project that hasn't been a big benefit. You know, like consider the first couple of roundabouts here, and there was a lot of opposition to it. And once it was in and operating for a while, a lot of those people that opposed it initially uh, came back and said, you know, it's not as bad as we thought it was going to be. It actually works pretty good. When, when I was a kid, there wasn't a house on Hillside. I mean, there wasn't the, the, the uh, Atwood building wasn't there, the, the initial Captain Cook was just being built. I mean, it wasn't here. You know, if, if you go back and look at Alaska and, and you know, the, the attitude that we see in so many areas where we don't need to build this road or we don't need that transportation project, um, you know, if we had that attitude 100 years ago, we wouldn't have uh, the Alaska Railroad, Klondike Railroad, we wouldn't have a Richardson Highway. Glen Highway, certainly not the Parks Highway, which was probably the most recent highway we built. It certainly brings a vision, a future, and kind of a new way of constructing transportation priorities for our state. That said, here we are 50 years later, and we still haven't really put the shovel in the ground. And I do know that this project was talked about before statehood. It's to a point now where it looks like it could happen. It would create the construction jobs to build a bridge. It would open up opportunities for businesses and, and growth in the, in the Matsu area. Moved down here as a young kid from Fairbanks in 1959, and Anchorage was a small town at the time. Uh, we lived very close to downtown, and our road was a dirt road. And, and now you just assume that these things were all, always paved and always developed. But uh, I've had the opportunity over 50 years of living here to watch Anchorage change from a, a small town to a thriving metropolitan city. I have three children between the ages of 17 and, and 22 that I would like them to have the same kind of economic opportunities that my generation has had here in Alaska. Again, I take you back to the, the legislature when they created Kabata, Kinnick Arm Bridge and Toll Authority. They understood this is really an economic development project beyond just being a transportation asset to say re relieve congestion, for example. After our kids go to college, many of them don't come back. If we open up affordable housing, good jobs, There'll be a lot of opportunity for our children to come back and continue 
the success of Alaska. The barrier to entry for people that want to buy a home in Anchorage, you know, it's cheaper and less expensive to buy a home in, in, the, in the Palmer, Wasilla, Matsu area by maybe $100,000. The Matsu Valley has been the 34th fastest growing county in the United States out of over 3,000 counties. We all have a, a combined economy that as it rises we all benefit and as any of our compatriots decline we do see some impacts. And you look across the inlet and you say, well, I don't see anything over there. And you're going to spend $700 million building a bridge to go over there and there's nothing there. This will provide residential property. It will provide additional commercial property. We've gotten a lot of stimulus dollars that are, are working on small projects that are really just sustaining jobs, not creating new jobs. The Kinnickarm Bridge would create somewhere around 14,000 jobs over a 10 to 15 year period. The state where we have 311,000 people working, 14,000 is significant. Incoming freight to Alaska comes in on the ships, according to the Port of Anchorage figures, accounts for about 80 to 85 percent of freight that comes into Alaska. The ability of that freight to get a more direct route north will benefit people in Fairbanks and it will benefit the oil and gas industry on the slope. It'll change the freight pattern, it'll change everything. It'll have an economic impact on the interior because the possibility is very strong that their freight rates will go down and that's a big part of their grocery bills and everything else, so it'll impact the whole state. And that, and that's where I think you know a project like this kind of levels the, you know, it kind of levels the playing field. There's a lot of just you know kind of uh, spin-off and associated benefit. I've been told by many elders of this area that Cook Inlet used to be so narrow that the villages of Eklutna and the village of Knik used to share one knife when they would cut fish in the summertime. Now we have this Kabata Bridge, and it's going to bring both sides of Kanik and Eklutna back together again. You identify a lot of things that you want to do to basically keep the earth um, a livable place when we're done. As a society, we need to build infrastructure for ourselves, but keep Alaska the way it is for future generations. One of the conventional methods of building a bridge foundation is pounding steel pile. Pounding one of those piles into the into the ground or you know in the water, it makes an awful lot of noise. And that causes ear damage to a lot of marine animals, especially whales um, and fish. And so what we've done is we're using what we call drilled shafts and we'll put a steel casing through the water. We'll oscillate that into the ground. Basically that's just rotating it back and forth into the ground rather than beating the stuff out of it. As a sidelight of the bridge reducing the miles traveled by the public also reduces the greenhouse gas emissions that come out of, out of people driving automobiles. I can't imagine working a 10-hour day and then having to make that commute out to the valley. It will be that missing infrastructure link to bring the valley closer to us and us closer to the valley. We want to see that progress, that social growth, that economic growth, that environmental growth. We want to see those growths happen sustainably. It's not only our right, but our responsibility. It's only a mile and a half across there to the port. It, it looks closer. You know, sometimes I feel like swimming across. There's a lot that's already happened out here. We've been developing Port McKenzie for 10 years to get to where we're at now. We've upgraded and paved the Point McKenzie Road. We're cutting grades on the hills. Uh, we've got other access roads put in, and, and you'll see a lot more companies locating here. North of the Port District, there's tens of thousands of acres up there that's available for low-cost residential development. Until you come over here and drive down the hill here to the dock, when you're on that hill, you realize how close uh, this side is. Someday there'll probably be restaurants and hotels over on this side on these bluffs looking towards uh, Anchorage, and it's spectacular, uh, especially at nighttime.
my my sense is that the public perception is the that the uh, they're waiting to see what you know what are the financial terms. Most projects in the state are paid for either uh, by federal dollars or state dollars. We we have a challenge to fund transportation going forward. We hear that uh, federal transportation dollars, which is what uh, funds most of the transportation infrastructure in Alaska today is in short supply. With a toll project, it's very innovative, at least for Alaska, and is, is something that we need to lead with because we will not be able to afford the infrastructure if we don't start to shift to other funding mechanisms. With a toll project, what happens is we're able to leverage limited public funds to get a lot of infrastructure. When you park on the street, whether you're in Fairbanks or whether you're in Anchorage, and you pay, it, you put money in the meter. Okay, the money in the meter doesn't go to buy another meter. This project alone, from the revenue generated, could build new infrastructure. The other thing that we're doing that's pretty innovative with the financing is we're uh, exploring delivering it as a public-private partnership, and instead of uh, underbuilding a project just to get it open because of limited public funds we're able to build it the right way the first time. You know, there, there are some skeptics that say that, you know, that there won't be enough traffic for it to pay for itself, but there isn't a toll facility out there, a major toll facility on a national highway system route that hasn't paid for itself. And not only that, in the future it will spin off excess revenue. It will actually help fund other transportation infrastructure when, in fact, we don't have the federal dollars. Uh, Connect Iron Bridge, it's, it's a big project, there's no question about it. You know, look at the long-term utility of it. You know, you can't imagine what it is. It's been one of the best things I've ever done. To see it finally complete, you know, I'm proud of the, the team that we have put together. It took all of us to make it happen. I'm just on my way out there to, to check on things. You know, it's great to see that you know, Anchorage is now part of the Mansu and the Mansu is part of Anchorage.